Recording is on. Yes. Hey everyone, it is the 2nd, no, it is the 7th of February 2023. And um, it's Mo here from the US Research, US Design Community. <laughs> I know, right? It's Moya from the Bitcoin Design Community. We have Art here. We also have Christoph. And this is UX research call number 13. And this is going to be a really interesting one because we've, um, you know, as we're building out the Bitcoin um, UX research toolkit, um, this call is essentially to have a discussion around the tools for, for phase two of the toolkit as well as any further iterations on um, part one. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, uh, we voted when we when we decided on the tools for, for phase one. And um, it feels very good to sort of, you know, ask and consult with the larger ecosystem also for the for the tools for for um, phase number two. Um, and um, also to consult with each other on what feels good and on how we're going to go about building it. So, um, yeah, that's the aim of this call. Is there anything else anyone would like to talk about? Um, I, one thing I was wondering, uh, Georgia posted this announcement of their new OpenUX.f initiative, mm -hmm. which uh, they also want to rally people to gather around UX research and doing all this stuff out in the open. They said they're a DAO, which I don't totally exactly know what that means, but my hunch is that this is, a and it seems like there's something you have to sign up and then like it's a little bit more commercially interested than a complete just, you know, we're open, we're a community, we do whatever you want. But I was just kind of curious if you had a chance to look at that and if you think about it, uh, what, what do you think of it? I'll Can have a look at it. Um, I didn't look at it, Christoph. I, I only mm -hmm. agreed very willingly to jump on the call because the call's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely jumping on the call, but I didn't actually have a look. I I never heard of the term DAO before, so I. Yeah, <laughs> you folks are such Bitcoiners. It's like <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay. Oh my god. No, I mean it's uh, it's a decentralized autonomous organization. Yeah. So it's like a group of people that get together without, let's say, you know, a, a, a traditional formal contract. We're sitting in a room. We're meeting together. We sign papers, yeah. but everything is handled via you know, cryptographic agreements online and there's kind of voting, you can be anonymous and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, I totally get the concept and all these things, but in actual practical terms, exactly how things get done, yeah. this yeah. is the thing that I am uh, confused about. And maybe it's something where you just have to go through it sometime, one time to actually know. But but like I said, you know, this is what they're shooting for. And I just, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, you know, like what are the dynamics then, you know? How does it work? It'll be That's cool, Mo, once you once you hop in to to take a look to let us know. Um, where I'm at now, like in terms of professional interest, is I'm I'm I lean on the maxi side of things, if that makes sense. Like I've I've done work in web. I've worked on probably the one of the biggest commercial Web three projects, which is the um, NFL All Day. Like I was in the space, right? Mm -hmm. I worked with Dapper Labs. So I'm not saying that I'm totally. It's just right now my heart is in the Bitcoin space. No DAOs, no Web threes. Um, <laughs> however, I'm I'm open, you know. So, yeah, so definitely let us let us know. Let us know how it goes. And and uh, yeah, there's regardless of the content interest, there's process overlap. Right? There we like, go. Exactly. What is UX research? How do we best conduct this work with a new emerging market, etc. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. And I know that she's, another... she's brilliant. There was another UX researcher that I worked with, that I had a call with, and she was working on a UX research toolkit only for Ethereum, you know, like it was completely, completely different, you know, completely different niche. And, you know, I've reached out to her a few times, but it would be nice, you know, to, to see what tools she's developed because these toolkits are being developed. Um, and um, it's good to kind of, you know, see what's being done and why it's being done. I, I always like to know the why. You know, um, so yeah, but yeah, no, I'll definitely uh, yeah, dive in, too. understand this whole Dao concept and how it works, and Dao. Dao, um, see, and then, <laughs> and then and this, the the ETH toolkit definitely flip it over our way uh, to have a look at. It. It'd be super, super cool to see yeah. 
yeah. how they're solving problems in that community. Yeah, I don't even have a link to the kit. I need to reach out to her. She's she's done an interview with um, the lady who's hosting the main call tomorrow. Christoph was on that call. I forget her name, but she was building um, a toolkit as well. Um, she wanted my eyes on her toolkit and I wanted my eyes on her toolkit, but we never ever <laughs> sit there. So, yeah, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. But is there anything you would like to talk about art? Really, it's just for the community to know the next steps with what we're doing here, uh, yeah. sharing our uh, project, our waterfall project roadmap. I'm doing a bunch of product management training, and they're trying to beat uh, waterfall out of me, but I'm still holding on just a little bit, just a bit. Um, I want the community to know what our next anticipated steps are, are yeah. now next and later, yeah. and for us to kind of riff a little bit on what those um, tools are mm -hmm. uh, for us to focus on in phase two. We don't have to like fully agree on them right now, but yeah. just to flesh out, let's say the top five and then yeah. go from there. I agree with you on that. Uh, de definitely deciding on those three, which those three are going to be, and then maybe seeing who we can reach out to who might be good with two one or good with two two and just seeing um yeah i'm down for that i like that idea i remember when we did when we voted on tool one people voted on which tool they felt would be the best um and this you know we, we had a bit of a bigger group on that call um this one i feel that if we kind of come up with a bit of a consensus around which tools we'd like to include he's disappeared i'll continue which tools we'd like to include in um your internet, yeah. My my computer does not like gypsy friends. But no, no. I was just saying that if we decide on which tools to include, it would be nice to also share it with some of the larger community as well. Agree. You have a big smile on your face, Christoph. <laughs> Are you just enjoying watching us? Are you looking yeah. really funny? Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I'm going to work much better if I'm uh, if I'm actually sharing something. Um, there we go. I'm going to jump into project operations, the masterpiece of art. Hey, community, you know, we are building and we've been building with some, you know, structure, some guidelines. We even we have a project timeline. We're ticking off all of the stuff as we're going along. We're marking it as complete. Um, the revising of the scope and build section, there's a very big word delayed. Over delayed. Here. Oops. <laughs> it's coming. It's like it's like a few a few days away. <laughs> don't, don't mind me, I have a bit of humor. <laughs> okay. Um, and now we're moving on to the phase of shipping to market. So I guess there's two discussions, um, figuring out what needs to be done a bit more with the build and scope. That's not a very big discussion, but then the second one is discussing the next three tools. Um, do you want to maybe dive into the next three tools part before we do this one? Because this is a bigger, bigger discussion. Well, uh, no, I think, I think we've already determined what needs to happen for phase one work. Like I, I yeah. think we're, we're quite pretty much there. Yeah. Um, if anybody needs updates on what needs to be done, they should just look at the recording of the survey uh, results. Yeah. Which really highlights what those things should be. And then the time now is best spent really talking about next directions for phase two, I think. Yeah, these ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me go to. Um... You know, we, 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 we had initially um, a Fig Jam board mm -hmm. where in the beginning we jumped on that Fig Jam board and we all voted together. Mm -hmm. And I'm now wondering if that Fig Jam board is still relevant or it will create some bias in making the decision around the next three tools, whether we should just jump in and vote totally from scratch. Nothing to look back on. I don't quite remember the board. As far as looking back, we have lots of projects that went through the community over the last two and a half years or so that we could look back on, yeah. identify which ones 
uh, would have been helpful but have not been used, which ones people actually use, and yeah. maybe a few other things. Ones that came up that people didn't use, which ones were used but didn't prove to be helpful, things like that. Yeah, that's I like that approach. I like that approach too. It's grounded in reality. Yeah, I like that approach too, because um, because it's it's coming from a point of listen. This is what's come up before in the community, and this is what people have been more likely to engage with. Um, what what has been your experience, Christoph, in terms of the of the past? That very few things were actually used. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's reality. Yeah, no, it's reality. Yeah. No, that's the truth. Yeah. You know, I, I think. Well, okay. So we we have these we have these several phases. We have the scope and build at the beginning. Then we have the ship to market, and then I don't know if the if there's a third one or if it's part of the second one. Is this iterative improvement over time? If that's just kind of the the end the forever end game. Yeah. If that's the same as phase, as the second part. Um, like with wallet scrutiny, we're currently in the second part. Just trying to think, were there any projects that were in the first phase? Building from scratch, yeah. I'd also have to, I'll have to think through it. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I think the competitive research stuff definitely uh, was something pretty common yeah. that, that we did, especially in the design community. We, we had so many project review calls that inspired all kinds of things. Yeah. And you were involved also, Christoph, with the Get Albi team. I know you helped them off. You helped them out with really when they were starting from the ground up with um, with the UI designs and that kind of thing. Also with a little bit of branding direction, I think. Um, yeah, it, it was just a hackathon project at the time, and they, yeah. the UI and uh, they just used the UI kit. And yeah. then I helped with the branding process, which was similar to what LDK did. The same kind of three step branding process from concept to concept to direction to that's something else. Idea to concept to direction. Yeah. These three steps. Yeah. And what but do I don't have to think about it. Christoph, what do you think? Because this is now it's called ship to market, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a product that already exists and they're wanting to make iterations, design iterations based on research. So yep. it's like you already have a product, so Bitcoin Core, and they're now we're now going to be suggesting, hey, these are the tools we suggest you can use mm -hmm. if you're going to make data-driven decisions about Bitcoin Core, for example. Yep. So that's kind of the product that we're thinking about when we say mm -hmm. like the ship to market. Um, it's already ready, but now you're reiterating on it again to improve usability, and then you're shipping it out to the market again. Yeah. I mean th that's where that's where you're really starting to get to um, to really get a feel for things. So you you can create proper personas based on actual usage. You can create proper user journeys that you can refine over time, um, and you can you can you know just like Albi, like they need it uh, to create kind of a and same thing with saving Satoshi happening right now to create a feedback repository. Mm -hmm. um, and find a good way to to take that and and organize that input and turn it into get it into production in in the right chunks and pieces and form. Feedback repository. So it's like when you say repository, you mean it's almost like a place where everything is collected, all of the information and insights is collected. Yeah. Do you remember how Albi had this thing where they had a Telegram group? I think they had reviews in the Chrome Web Store and Firefox add-on store thing, mm -hmm. and then Slack messages and other stuff, mm -hmm. and they needed to make sense of that. So that that was you know that that was information that came to them. They didn't have to go out and get it. Yeah. Um, and the, and yeah. in the industry, that's that's often called like analytics. Mm -hmm. And and I know that word is um, charged in the open source community, but that's pulling information in from different um, functional areas like customer success. Typically, customer success deals with. Um, like direct feedback from customers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, social media, right? That's another mm -hmm. place that people get feedback, mm -hmm. um, sentiment analysis. Um, and then you can have broad usage data. Like for example, if you're not looking at 
like in the in the case of Nostra, for example, you're, yeah. you can't, it's it's against <laughs> open source to um, to gather specific feedback on like what people are clicking. But you could tell like this many people are coming from China, this many people are coming from yeah. you know the states, right? But the, there's an art and science to pulling that information and and having one person um, be the we were talking about this with Jan, I think, in the very first call. One person be the owner of the data and the mm -hmm. keeper of the data, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that might be interesting too. I, 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 you know, this is a, such a good point because um, I was just on a call with Vault Observer, literally jumped off a call with them. They're struggling with the same thing is we have a whole lot of data. Get Albi had the same thing. We have a whole lot of data. We have it from all these different sources. Please tell us what to do with it. It's like research ops. It's almost like I, it, it feels, you know, just intuitively like this is a problem in the space because they, they're getting their right. feedback on GitHub. They're getting it in Telegram. They, they're, they're wanting to understand we have all this feedback. Firstly, how do we process it? And secondly, what do we do with those insights? Yeah. How do we actually feed those insights back into actual designs? Yeah, um, another, another um, what do you call that, uh, dimension to consider this one is that um, some, like Albi made its way from a hackathon project to a pretty well-organized and well-run team with dedicated roles for certain things. Other open source projects, you know, people come in, people go, it's a little bit Wild West type of thing. Sometimes you have a team of two people, sometimes you have five, fluctuates different times. Um, thinking about how kind of when you're really well organized, what this could look like. And mm -hmm. if you want to be really well organized, so you get there. Mm -hmm. But also if you're, let's say, small to medium sized projects and it's very loose collaboration, mm -hmm. how you can still get do well with you know your requirements and maybe also at a very small scale if you if you just like every two months you're going to run a survey or so and that's kind of the most you can do because that's for your user base and the tool that you're building that's just also kind of appropriate yeah. maybe how um what that could be like so we have one potential tool which we can call data data sorting aka something else you know i don't know what, what's the right word for it maybe a date It'd be a, a repository. It'd be a research repository. Maintaining and keeping a research repository. Yeah. I mean, this this is in a sense the, like the job of a product manager. You're you're like you're you're sifting, you're screening, right? You're validating um, uh, insights that come through the pipe, mm -hmm. and then you're backlogging and proposing this to the mm -hmm. builders in a mm -hmm. sense, right? Yeah. 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 This is a more of a complex one. It'll be super cool for us to to figure yeah. out how to write it. I'm it's really something excited. that I need to learn more about as well because it's a big problem in the space. And, you know, Christoph's brought it up as well. It's it's a big problem. I think that would be a really good tool to include. Um, yeah, we can vote, you know, we can see eventually, but I think that would be, would be a really good one. Um, Love it. Yeah. Great idea, Christoph. Yeah. I also, um, you know, I'm thinking about Bitcoin Core. I'm thinking about Wallet Scrutiny as well, which, which you know, I work with Christoph on Wallet Scrutiny and Bitcoin Core. And what we've used a lot is these moderated usability tests um, on a product that you're wanting to then, you know, reiterate on and ship to market. So I'm just curious what you guys' thoughts are on the moderated usability tests. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you're on board and with that one. 100%. We have to have that. Yeah, as, as, a, as a ship to market. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So we Put have two. Humans. Yeah. We have two then. Well, and then the moderated usability, like in in practice, when you're building a product, you're you're iterating, you're prototyping, right? Some people do pr rapid prototyping as well, and I think moderated usability tests and rapid prototyping are a good marriage together, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. or or maybe separate the two. But I, I um, if we're shipping, we need to prototype, we need to iterate. Yeah. Um, so I think we have three then. Yeah. Rapid yeah. prototyping, moderated yeah. usability testing, and um, what was the last one that we call it? A repository. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the repository one is really coming from a need that we've recognized that it's a problem in the space and it's addressing that problem that already exists. Um, and then the usability testing moderated one comes from, go ahead, Christoph. Yeah, you know, I, I was just thinking, uh, because it is so need-based, because people come and say, I, I have this problem, 
yeah. that would make it pretty easy to just make so it's an easy sell in a way you can just yeah. speak directly to that problem if you have it here are some things that you can do pick the ones like the specific technique or approach that fits best with your team here's how albi did it here's how this other team did it yeah 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 i like it that it's really needs based and it's also based on you know stuff that we've seen come up again and again um, and it's also speaking from, you know, I've been, I'm, I mean, you know, we're doing Bitcoin Core. I think we're going to, you know, we're going to prototype. We're going to probably run usability tests there. Um, Wallet Scrutiny, we did the same thing. So it seems that the moderated usability test, it just keeps on coming up time and time again. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a very basic classic yeah, tool. It's the Show most people basic. stuff. See yeah. what they think. <laughs> yeah. Um, Art, I'm curious to learn from you more about the prototyping. That's something that I'd like to learn from you about. But um, yeah, we can discuss how we can um, start creating. I guess we just, you know, jam in Google Documents and um, kind of just sprint a little bit towards creating the um, his internet. Do the same thing that we did with. Um, we got you back. We got you. No, I was, I was, I was mumbling on, but I was saying, um, with we, we've, we've loosely decided on three tools now, um, based on experience, based on, you know, what we've seen happening in the community. Um, do you think we should share it with more people and get a little bit of feedback from? I them? think so. Yeah, I think so. I, I would, re I really wish we had, you know, Yaka, but I really wish we had Jan here. Yeah. Um, to, to flesh out different methodologies and tools. Like, here's what I'll do. I'll share, I'm just gonna share my screen very briefly. Actually, will I? Christoph, I know you need to hop soon, so feel free to just give away. How much time do you have, Christoph? Uh, three minutes. Okay. <laughs> oh, three minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right, Mo. I think we should put it out to the community. I think we should ask, like, especially the two of you. I'm. I feel like I'm at a hands distance, arms length. Um, like, we should ask people who have gone through these struggles. Christoph, yourself, thinking about these cases, right? Um, what would people have needed, right? Um, in in those along the journeys, what would have helped them? Is is how I'm thinking about it because ultimately the marker of success for this toolkit is that it's a product that's used, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just took a note for myself to set aside an hour or half an hour or so this week um, just to, to look back at all the projects and try to think through and, and see, what, see what I can dig up. Like, you know, for example, I, there might also be material like for the, for the branding process I posted I have this video from over a year ago for the LDK branding where I described the process that we went through. And I posted that in that Discord for the product community. There might be stuff we can reference yeah. uh, also. So I'll, I'll try to I'll try to yeah. put something together there. Hopefully that's helpful. That that will definitely be helpful. Just maybe even asking like how how could we have solved this problem? And then we could think to ourselves, what tool or method would have uh, supported that? Mm -hmm. Good one. Right. Good one. Yeah. We, I know you need to go. We, the, the, you know, we're not in the position right now to be reaching out to projects and asking them what UX research tool did you use? Because, you know, it's still, it, it's very much moving towards, it's at its infancy now. So we, that's yeah. not a question we can ask, but we can ask them, what problems are you trying to solve right now? But, you know, you could also go to, let's say, uh, you know, Phoenix Wallet to their GitHub repo or Blue Wallet, go to their GitHub repository, just type in, go to the search field and type in research mm -hmm. or user feedback mm -hmm. or, uh, or those telegrams to see if there was, if there, um, I mean, the, the, you could do this in two minutes per project, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a ton of time, but maybe there is, uh, there are some conversations and things out there that could also be picked up if you if you just want to do a very quick quick check and maybe you know we'll stumble across something that's a good one it's a really good idea that's a good it's idea pra practicing what we preach right seeing what phoenix is doing maybe there's something in the repository you know breeze 
a lot of these other wallets. Maybe there's some some stuff that's existing in the public archives. It's open source, so huh. maybe there is some stuff. Yeah. And then maybe also asking, we're just posting the Bitcoin design community as well. Like, guys, you know, very loosely, these are the three ideas we have as including as the next three in the UX research toolkit. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? And then not naming them, but giving a little bit of, it, of an of explanation about each thing and not expecting people yeah. to understand what it is um, would be a good one as well. Cool. Awesome. You can hop off, Christoph. Yes. Thanks for the conversation. See you soon. Thanks, Thank Art. You. <laughs> See you online. Bye. Okay. I'm just going to wait. There he is. Yeah. Christoph had to hop off. That's okay. But um, that feels good. Um, you know, um, I was just mentioning to Christoph that. Um, it would, it's a nice idea to also post in the Bitcoin design community, like guys, you know, these are the three tools we're thinking of including in the, in, yeah. in, in scope and build. Very um, brief summary, two sentences about each tool, what it is, what it does, yeah. yep. asking them for a little bit of feedback. Yep. Um, and then the, oh, other yeah. thing, the other thing that Christoph also mentioned was... Um, going to these repositories and that might be as simple as just quick Excel spreadsheet, pop in, pop in, add in some names of some Bitcoin wallets into that Excel spreadsheet, GitHub link to each of those um, GitHub, um, you know, open source repositories, typing in the word research and seeing if research and user feedback and seeing if anything comes up, maybe someone's sharing something in the public or maybe they have repositories that they work in or I don't know. You never know what you might come across. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Any other ideas? Well, one one tool that we also heard of in phase one, which isn't really a tool, but it's a method, is uh, surveying. Yeah. Using surveys to gather feedback about people's experiences. That's a good um, one. I think we should throw that in just so people feel... Um, like it's available for them to use. Survey, I mean, we could theoretically, we could theoretically have the survey live across both. That's actually not a bad idea. It's yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah. Because yeah. You, you, you're, you're really touching on something. Um, you know, when I was giving the presentation um, in Brussels on Sunday, something that just came out of my mouth was I said, you know, these are recommendations from us. Where to, of tools to use in phase one and tools to use in phase two. But these are not hard and fast recommendations. But then I was thinking, well, you know, if I put myself in their shoes, how am I helping them to make a decision if I'm saying that nothing's hard and fast? But with what you're saying is, look, if we put surveys across both, mm -hmm. then we're saying, look, you have, you know, we're suggesting that you can use surveys in this phase and you can use them in that phase. Well, the... the yeah, I mean, yes, yes, absolutely. And and then interviews are technically the same thing, right? Uh, talk with users, yeah. right? Um, it's just surveys are a method and serve, and interviews are a method. <clears throat> They're not a tool. Um, and so what we can do is we could say that you could always be uh, gathering feedback through these different methods, but the specific thing you're wanting to get is the tool, like how you're uh, designing the survey, the kinds of questions you're asking. Like, for example, a moderated usability test is an interview, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then jobs to be done isn't can be an interview. You see what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. So how do how do we do what you're saying, which is how do we <clears throat> guide them, but also make it stupid simple? That's um, a is, that's a that's a good point that you're making. Because at the same time, you know, we're we're having to say, you know, the audience, we're assuming that the audience that the kid is being built for is someone who has, you know, very little or no experience yeah. in user research. Yeah. So if they, land on, if they land on the kit and there's no clear guidance yeah. as to which of the methods or tools to use, then they'll walk away with not making a decision. Yeah. Yeah, or they'll just click through it and get frustrated, right? So, yeah, and we don't we don't want that. Could we, could we in some way 
how could we advise on the welcome page, which, because that was some of the feedback that came up. Yep. Could we yep. provide a, a checklist of, hey, these are the problems you're facing. Probably these problems, you can discover a solution to them if you do competitive research. Hey, these are the problems you're working with right now. Probably if you, yeah. but then that's still, you, that's still, it's not really hard and fast though, because <laughs> normally you're going to do well, like, yeah. I don't think we need to overthink it. I think it's, I think it's like, you know, start with competitive research. I'm not saying that this is the right thing. Just yeah, start yeah. here. Yeah. Um, you know, then this, then this, but go, you know, your mileage may vary. Right. Yeah. I think, I think that's fine. Again, like we're not writing a book on UX research, no. right? It's mm -hmm. like, here's six or seven tools, all of which will support the journey you're on, all yeah. of which will. Yeah. So, uh, start here. If that's not the right one, choose this other one, you know? It, yeah. So, but that's, that's, I think my job is to write that section yeah. for the landing page. So I'll, I'll figure that out. Yeah. That's going to be a little bit, a bit of an interesting one because it's, um, it's indeed, it's that guidance that, um, mm -hmm. start here, you know, start here. Exactly. Start yeah. here, make it really stupid, simple, really obvious. Mm -hmm. We think you mm -hmm. should start here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then what do we do with this, with these surveys slash interviews right you made a you 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 said tools and then you said methods yeah um, well here's the difference okay so a method i mean i'm also making these words up as i go but um interview and then observation right so surveying interviewing and observation these are ways to collect insights about the world right these are primary research methods yeah um methods those heads like nobody cares about this nobody cares that surveys are a method people just want to know what to do they just want to know what to do yeah it's exactly. just yeah it doesn't matter if it's a tool or a method i think it's more um it's more about just that it provides the insights that they need. You know, it's, it's, um, yeah. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. But you're, you have a good one. It doesn't matter whether it's a method or a tool. It's more yeah, people don't care. the insights that they need. So. Well, so maybe it is the case then, Hey, that we, that we throw in, Again, we'll put this to Jan, Jakob, and others, but maybe surveys just live across both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that, maybe that's all we do. Surveys live across both, um, and then people were really curious about like why aren't personas in there? You know, why aren't we doing this or that thing? Um, and we don't have any good answer except for that it's probably not the most effective use of your time, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. So yeah. And then I have a little bit of, of a question for you as well is, you know, with the competitive research, you could do that at the beginning of the project. But you could also do that when you already have an existing product. Oh, that's exactly it. Yeah. You, like you could, you could continue doing the things that you've done, but just become better at it. Like you could refine your journey map, for example. Right. Yeah. Um, you could, you could be refining your jobs. Um, you could do your you could do your user journey map again when you already have a product to go be yeah. like okay guys we want to figure out where the most friction points are lying do we need to focus on onboarding for example so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's but again we're, what we're doing is we're we're breaking it up into those two yeah um, steps just to keep it simple for people exactly and exactly. then and then we could say that you know in the uh, ship to market phase that. Um, you could be repeating the things from the first phase just to exactly. get them more refined. That's it. Exactly. So it's more yeah. a recommendation of, look, if you're in this phase, highly recommend you use these three tools. Yeah. If you're in phase two, these are the three, three or four tools we recommend, but Hey, guess what? You could still use the first three as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
exactly. And we can communicate that to them, maybe visually, maybe a nice diagram communicating that or, you know, using words as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well, I mean, here's another model to throw another wrench in. Mm -hmm. So the first one is, um, is about exploration. It's about discovery, right? The mm -hmm. ideation. Mm -hmm. The second phase could be prototyping, mm -hmm. which could be um, moderated usability tests and rapid prototyping. And then the third one, which is testing. Never mind. Nope. Nope. We're good. We're good. Nope. We're good. We're keeping the way. It, we're keeping it the way it is now. Wait, hold I was on. Just trying to, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just trying to see if that might be a helpful thing, but. I don't think it is. It almost feels like the first phase is I'm just using plain human language. I need to understand what I need to build. I need sure. to understand what I need to build. So yeah. I need to do competitive research, user journey mapping. I need to understand what I need to build. But then after you understand what you've built, need to build, you now get a whole bunch of complaints from users and they're not happy with it. And now you decide, hey, I need to make some changes to what I've built because there's problems with it. So well, there's a step, there's a step before that, which okay. is I need to build something and I need to determine whether the thing that I'm, that I'm building that I think is solving that original problem, whether that indeed is solving the original problem. So maybe it does make sense. Maybe it does make sense to break it up into three, which is discovery, prototyping, and then like launching shipping right because in that case you have the middle step where you're doing that iteration you're running those moderated usability tests you're rapidly prototyping mm -hmm. to see if your idea of a solution is actually meeting market mm -hmm. demand right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the last step could be this research repository like ongoing surveying is um what else what, what's building another? that more long-term structure to continue yeah the product build it's, process it's like Christoph said, it's like that, like, um, lifelong, almost like maintenance of, of the product in a sense, right? Yeah. So we could, you know, you know, right now, I mean, we can think about the wording, but right now we're calling it ship to market. We could even call it, I'm not saying maintenance is the right word. Um, we could call it something along those lines, you know, not maintenance, but wanting to continually improve on the current product. Iterate. It's iterate. iterate. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, so the first one, the first one would be, uh, what do we call it again, Mo? We call it um, build and scope. You're trying, uh, did we call it build and scope? I need to. Oh, scope and build. Scope and build, yeah. Yeah. Because you don't, you first you scope and then you build. So. Scope and build. I think it should be changed. I think it should be changed to something like um, ideate and scope. Second one should probably be prototype, and the third one should probably be iterate. Yeah. Because then we're following the design thinking methodology, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, I feel that's going to make it more easier for people to understand which tool they're going to choose. Exactly. Because there's, Absolutely. it just feels like there's going to be too much of confusion if we don't have the third one in. Because they're lumping two, what are different things together into one. Mm. I agree. Yeah. I wish we had a, like a Miro, could you make a Miro board? I can make a Miro board. Hold on. I'm going to, I can also do a fig jam. Let me go do a fig jam. It's because fig jam is the same as, uh, as Miro. Yep. We can jam Whichever in there. One. Whichever one. Just yeah. so we can map this out. Yeah. Good one. I'm just going to go create a new one. Okay. A new fig jam. Um, I'm going to call it. Yeah. I'm going to share that with you and give you editing access. Cool. So I'll share the link with you. And I will just title it. Um, phase two. Cool. All right. So 
I'm not sure about your internet, but I'll just start with some sticky notes here. Okay. I managed to get that one. Let me see. It up. So we're loosely talking about having three, okay? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I'm just going to... I definitely... This is my first time using FigJam, so bear with me, please. Yeah, no, no worries. It's very, it's really similar to uh, to Miro. I don't seem to have um, writing ability. Do you not have writing? Edit ability. Anyone with link can edit. Let me just refresh. Maybe I maybe, need to refresh. Maybe I should refresh. Yeah. Could you could you give it a try now? Do you have editing access? No. I need to create an account. Um, because I have here anyone with the link can edit. So you should, we can just jump in Miro as well. Miro is also fine. Let me go to Miro. Um, I'll create a new board. Hold on, maybe it's just lagging. No, yeah, I don't, I don't seem to have the ability to. Sad. Okay, let me just call this phase. Um, Organize. I'm just creating a new mirror board and I'm going to. Um, anyone with link can edit. Yep. And I'm going to share this mirror board with you here. Thank you. Let me know if that works. Yeah. Let's see. Yep, yep, yep. I see the left pane. Um, yeah, we're good. This is working. Okay, yep, yep, so yep. you're more familiar with Miro than I am, so I'll let you to set up. I'll leave you to set up the organization of the board. Oh my god, that's all the same, my friend. It's all the same. <laughs> um, I just, I like, I, I like watching someone else move away on the screen. It just, I, I enjoy it for some reason. Um, you enjoy watching people create stuff on screens. Yeah. Um, so one time within the Bitcoin design community, um, there were three UX designers working in a Figma file at the same time yeah. and designing yeah. at the same time. It yeah. was cool to watch. Yeah. Watching designers do their thing is really cool. Also watching service designers do their thing is kind of fun too because they're masters of facilitation. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking something like this, something simple. This is um, iterate. ID prototype iterate. This kind of follows the design thinking model. Here we have our glorious um, previously made methods like journey mapping. You know, we have our um, that's to be done. And then mm -hmm. we also have our other one. Idea for prototyping. I forget which, what's the third one, if you don't mind, um, is rapid. Prototyping. Moderated usability testing. Exactly. Yeah. Moderated usability tests. Whoop. Moderated usability testing. Whoop. Um, and then with iterate, we have, well, what did we say before? We had A-B tests, which um, we'll discuss. And then we talked about uh, surveys. surveys. Well, the idea, <clears throat> one of the ideas is that surveys are, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Surveys are kind of a, um, let's see, something like, like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Surveys, where you can use them all throughout, right? Mm -hmm. This is Research Insight, research Repository. Search. Uh, the repository one's going to be interesting um, because most of the people with open source like to work with, you know, open source tools. Um, Just use a Google Doc, they'll be fine. Yeah. So, <laughs> they'll figure it out then. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Although Google Doc, sorry, that's silly. Google Doc is not an open source tool. Um, yeah, open but... Docs is an open source tool. Yeah, there's a lot of open source um, one, but you know, yeah. Um, we have jobs to be done twice there. It was. The oh, oops. One. What was the third one? What was the third one? One second. 
One second, one second, one second. I'll just pull that up. Competitive here. research. Great. All right, and then we have our prototyping, moderated usability testing. Um, I mean, there's so many that you can do when you're just like testing this idea out. Like you could do um, MVPs, like concierge MVPs. You could do like a um, uh, fake door test, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you can run a survey. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking something like this. Right. A B tests are meant to optimize. They're not meant to like solve a problem for the first time, really, most mm -hmm. of the time. How does this look? It looks good to me because um so I'm just trying to put myself now in someone else's shoes. So they see this in front of them now. Ideate, okay, they're trying to come up with an idea. They want to create something from scratch. Mm -hmm. Um the word prototype. I'm not sure if the word if we, maybe we can play around with some some. Is that not a common word in people's no, language? No, it is. But I'm trying to think. Um, you know, how would we let them know, like, when to start doing that? You know, it's yeah. What phase are they in? Um, what do you mean? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Are you, talk, are you talking about like having like a little, like almost like a subscript underneath being like. I think so. Unsure what doing, lol. And then this one is like, uh, wanna test the thing. Exactly. To see if exactly. It works. Exactly. Exactly. Oh there it we works. go. Let's make it work better. Exactly. Uh, yes. This is it. This is it. Okay, cool. This is in human language, you know? I mean, we're not going to use this, but if someone reads that and they're like, I, I'm not sure what I want to build. Okay, I should probably start here. Oh, I want to mm -hmm. test the thing and see if it actually works. Oh, probably I should do these. Oh, yeah. I need to see if it works better I need because I want to make it work better. Okay, well, well then why not, why not, why not actually make this kind of human-ish? Right. Mm -hmm. um, let me delete that. ID. So why not just have it actually be what it's going to be, and then we could just share that as a screenshot. And get people's feedback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good one. Do you understand this? Are you able to make a decision if you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm also going to have to hop in five minutes because I have another phone call. <laughs> Busy girl, wow. Yeah, it's my third phone call in a row. Um, so just want to go get some coffee or some tea. Um, For sure. ID8 is um, figure out what problem you want to solve, yeah. Like that, right? Perfect. Um, and this would be like uh, learn if my solution is, and this would be um, make my solution work better mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Oh, we just created a new model. That's kind of cool. This is perfect. No, this is this is making. I don't know how you feel about it, but this is making a lot more sense to me, and it's it's um it's feeling a lot isn't, more. Isn't that incredible? Like when you start putting things into like images and visuals, how much easier it is to to understand things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. Figure out what problem it is that I want to solve. Then learn if the solution I came up with is actually the right solution. 
And now I have my solution, but I want to actually test if my solution, I've, I've built my solution. Now I want to test if my solution um, is working and I want to improve it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Perfect. This is perfect. It's human. Okay. It's, it's easy to understand. Um, so how many additional, you know, uh, kind of methods or tools are we looking at? We're looking at maybe one 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 or two per i think i think ideally we want to have like three max per yeah per group um but <clears throat> the goal right now is to brainstorm to get people to fill out as many as they can for yeah. each i think even if we run with like this what we're looking at in front of us right now we go for two under the prototyping phase and two on the iterate yeah you know less is more less is allowing for easier decision making as well yeah yeah um and if we are dealing with an audience that's maturing and warming up to this concept um then less might even be better less is definitely better mm -hmm. yeah and just make them really good just make them really good yeah mm -hmm. thank you for thinking through with me on this and uh helping to come up with a solution. Happy to support the uh, the work. Cool. Okay, well, let's send this first to, to our inner team, just get a gut sense of yeah. what they think of it, and then maybe ship it out to the community and see what they think. Yeah, sounds like a good one. Sounds like a good idea. I'm down for that. Cool. And then we'll have to see how we do the additional calls because, you know, we, we, yeah. we need to make a decision on these ones first after well, feedback. Isn't it funny? Like I'm, I was talking about dashing waterfall, and like literally, this is why because you change things and the whole model breaks. You know, the idea we've had breaks now. You know, the, yeah. the next three calls, those timelines, they might not work. Maybe we have exactly. to push one call back a week until we've collected a bit of feedback about this one. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah, let's do that then. Cool. I'm going to end the call now. Thank you for being here. And then um, I'm just going to end the recording.